In the next material that we create, we will learn a process called bump mapping. This is a rendering trick that creates the illusion of additional geometry on the surface of an object. If you're continuing from the previous section, then you don't need to do anything special. However, if you're starting from a new scene, go ahead and open the file Chapter 4 Interior Material 04.max. Then open the Slate Material Editor to continue with the lesson. Here we are going to create a material that will simulate wood for the beams that are in the ceiling of our room. Now instead of erasing the previous material from the View 1 work area, we're going to create a new work area that we can use to edit the wood material that we're going to create. In the View 1 work area, right click on the top bar. It currently contains the View 1 tab. From the right click menu, choose Create a New View, and let's name this view Workspace 2. So go ahead and type in Workspace 2, and then click OK. That creates a new empty workspace that we can use to create the wood material that we're going to apply to the beams on the ceiling. In the Material Map Browser, scroll the Navigator window until you get to the Mental Ray rollout for materials. We'll select from the Mental Ray Materials rollout the Autodesk Hardwood material and drag it into our workspace. You'll notice that it comes with two maps connected to the map slots in the Autodesk Hardwood Material node. We want to remove these two maps because we're going to replace them with a different map. To do this, click and drag around the two map nodes that we want to delete. Then press the Delete key on the keyboard to remove them from the work area. Let's double click on the title bar for the Autodesk Hardwood Material node. Then double click on the Material Preview Sphere. That'll make it a little bigger and give us a better idea of what we're looking at. Go ahead and turn on the Show Background and Preview option in the upper toolbar. Then in the Material Attributes window, let's name the material to Wood Beam. Go ahead and type in Wood Beam in the text entry box and press Enter to accept the name. In the Maps rollout of the Material Map Browser, navigate to where you see the Wood Map. Click and drag the wood map into our new work area. Click on the output of the wood map and drag it to the input of the wood image shader slot on the Autodesk hardwood material. Just like so. You should now see a red line being drawn from the wood map output to the wood image input on the material node. In the default hardwood material attributes, Change the Used For option by clicking on the Used For drop-down list. Change this option to Furniture. That will change how Mental Ray renders the surface of this wood. Now go ahead and assign this material to the wood beams. We have a name selection set for them. In the main toolbar, click the down arrow next to the selection set type in and click on the selection set called Beams. That will select all the beams in the scene. In the Slate Material Editor, make sure you click on the Wood Material node. Then in the Material Editor toolbar, click the Assign Material to Selection button. This assigns the material to all the beams. Make sure your Camera 1 viewport is active. Click the Render button on the main toolbar to render the scene and see what the wood looks like on the beams. This is a procedural or mathematically defined texture. So we cannot see it correctly in the viewport. We have to render the scene in order to make sure it's applied correctly. Once the rendering is done, we can take a look and see if we need to make any changes to the wood map that is applied to our beams. For now, let's go ahead and close the render window. Right now, our wood map that is applied to the beams looks good. However, the beams look very smooth and we want them to look a little bit rougher, more like raw wood beams. We're going to use a technique called bump mapping to simulate the rough surface of the wood. We do this by dragging a cellular map into the work area. So go ahead and grab the cellular map, drag that into the work area, click on the output of the cellular map, and drag it over the input of the relief pattern. Release the mouse button. You'll see the line now connecting the cellular map output to the relief pattern image input. The relief pattern is the bump channel for the Autodesk hardwood material. 
The way bump mapping works is it uses the grayscale values in a map to virtually push and pull the surface of an object at render time. This makes it seem like there's a little more detail in the geometry than is really present. In this case, we're using the values in the color of the cellular map to create the bump illusion. The last thing we need to do is tell the material to use this map. Double click on the material in the Slate Material Editor, and in the Relief Patterns rollout, click on the Type drop-down list, and select Custom. This will tell the material to use the map that we just assigned to that channel. Change the amount to 0.5. Now let's take a look at the map that we're using to create this bump. Double click on the cellular map to get the map attributes. If we double click on the preview window, it will expand it and make it a little larger for us to view it better. In the attributes editor, in the cellular parameters rollout, cell characteristics area, Click on the Chips style and check the Fractal checkbox. That will make this a little less of a blobby look and more of a cut look. We'll leave the size and other options alone until we know what this is going to look like in the rendered image. Now if you look in the map node of our work area, you can see the grayscale image that will be used to create the bump on the surface. Go ahead, let's render the Camera 1 viewport again. Click the Render button in the main toolbar and let this render. Now you'll notice that our beams have a little bit more of a visual texture. This simulates the geometry and is a much more efficient method of adding detail than actually going in and modeling this information. It would take an awfully long time to model this properly, not to mention it would add an additional amount of rendering time to your frame. Press Ctrl S to save your file then go ahead and save an increment of this file.